Okay, what's up guys? It's Chase Plays here and today I wanted to go over how to hack Unity games in C++ and this tutorial is going to be very straightforward. We're just going to go over things that you need to pay attention before you make the trainer so you don't have any more questions and you don't have to you can just agree, come ahead, go ahead and become a professional. You don't have to worry about asking any questions. So hopefully this is a no confusion kind of tutorial, and this is not going to be too bad. So we're going to go over the first step, which is understanding the difference between C Sharp and C++ and how to handle things in C++ versus handling C Sharp. So we're going to be working on a mono game at first. It's called Risk of Rain. All right. So when you open up the directory for Risk of Rain 2, it might be different for you, but since this is a mono game, you'll see it's mono bleeding edge. If it were to be an IL2 CPP game, it's going to have game assembly and SCP SL data. So we're going to go ahead and open up the Risk of Rain 2. We're going to open up the data. We're going to go to Manage, and we're going to open up Assembly C Sharp. Now, usually in most games, all the data might be stored in Assembly C Sharp, but it's not the case for this game. We're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, Microsoft Core Library. This is the most important library to focus on right now. Well, actually, really the second most. But um, this right here is an assembly. This is the assembly. MS Core Lib is the assembly. This is the name, MS Core Lib .dll. Then these, this right here, the yellow, and obviously with the brackets, this is a namespace. So the reason I'm telling you to memorize these things is because when we use the helpers for mono and IO2 CPP, it's going to require the path to um, the class or the method or the field that you're accessing. Now, what I mean by the helpers is that I've created uh, IO2 CPP and mono helper so for your trainer. So you can actually get the offsets to a method get the offsets to a field you don't actually have to list down the offset when you see the rva or you try to find the rva you don't have to update it every time so that's a good thing you know it's it saves you less less time it, sa it saves you more time and it's less energy that you have to focus on updating now the the main namespace we're going to be focusing on in this ms core library is the system namespace. Now the system namespace stores the system.array class. Now the first thing I can tell you about the system.array class is that it's a class, obviously. Uh, and that's why you can you can tell it's a class because of the color. And you obviously just hover over it. This is a class and this is a structure. Now when I say it's a class, in C++ you will treat this instance of you will treat this op the object that is a part of this class or inherits this class. You will treat it as a pointer every single time. Okay, um, if it's ever asking for the reference of a class, you give it a pointer pointer. You're gonna, you're gonna have to. It's gonna modify the uh, pointer of a pointer, obviously. So in C plus plus arrays or classes. I'm mean, sorry. In C++, classes are pointers. All right, so in this class, system.array, this is the base array class that every single object, if they have this, the brackets right here, whenever that shows up, it's, it's system.array, okay? So you will refer to this class every single time. So the main methods you're going to be looking at is get value. You're just going to pass in the index, which is zero-based. And um, as you see that, you know, it's a, it's not a static method. Okay, so that means what? What do you think that means? Uh, obviously, you got to get uh, a reference to the instance of the class that you're accessing. So the class array, you need to get an instance of it in order to call this method. Now, if it's static, you don't need that. You just can call the method straight up because it's static. It it's tied to all. It's tied to the class itself, so every instance gets access to it. And so we're going to be looking at get value. We're going to call this to get the value at that zero base index. And to get the index, we just call get length, and then this will give us the size of the array. Okay. So enough about this class. We're going to go ahead and move on. We're going to take a look at this. Uh, let's just go ahead and look at maybe. 
let's just look at this this char structure. So this char structure, it's it's not we're not really gonna be worrying about this or even accessing it at all. Maybe you guys might, but um, the thing about a structure is you do not treat structures as a pointer in C++. Okay, do not treat it as a as a pointer. Now the the thing about mono is it's finicky how mono works with this. Is that when you when you call a method that returns a structure, let's say like for this right here, it's going to return date time, which is a structure. Okay. When you call this method and you pass in an instance to a structure such as let's say that this char structure and you pass that in to date time and it returns date time if you try to access that obviously as, as a non point you just try to access it directly it's going to crash because mono is going this is what mono does it boxes up the object it's, it's going to return a mono object that is it boxes up the data of um, that it's returning so it's actually going to, I know it's going to be a bit confusing, but this is not the case for IL2 CPP, okay? Not the case. You're going to have to dereference, because it's going to, re this is going to return a mono object pointer, and you're going to dereference that with using mono object unbox, and then that is going to be your date time structure and it will work out perfectly fine and i'll show you what i mean in the next episode so don't even worry about that we're going to go ahead and move on from this so what we can learn is structs are not pointers but if you're if it's return if a method is returning a structure only one that isn't static okay if it's static you can return it no problem if it's non-static and requires an instance, you have to unbox it, which I will show you how to do that. So don't worry. The helper actually takes care of it for you, but I'm going to show it to you anyways. Now, Memus Corelib, very important assembly, but we're going to look at the next, the, actually the most important one, which is UnityEngine.Core module. That's the assembly name. And this is the name. This is the path, the name path, whatever we want to call it. Then this is the namespace. We're going to take a look at namespace unity engine and we can take a look at the camera class. So, um, what is that? If you remember, what do we treat classes as? It's a pointer. All right, let's move on. So, this stores the world to screen point. We already got, what's that, fellas? We already got a, a built in world to screen function. So, you don't have to recreate one at all. But you could, though, because it actually has a projection matrix right here. Anyways. World to screen, world to viewport point is actually another way you can calculate um, screen coordinates. But the difference between world to screen point is that it's going to return the x and y should be the screen coordinates. However, world to viewport point returns x and y. Yeah, but you have to times that times equal that by the width and height. So you would times x by width and y by height, and then that would be the screen coordinates. Now, obviously, these are not static methods, so you obviously, what? You got to pass in an instance of the camera. Now, how do we get the instance of a camera? There are multiple ways to do it. Um, usually, some games have multiple cameras, which is why they have a method called get all cameras. But if you're lucky, you only have to call this, which there's only one camera that you just call this, get main camera. But... If you were to use get all cameras, you're gonna to have to figure this out on your own. Which camera is the main camera associated that you to your um to your screen? So you just iterate through it and just draw and see. Try to draw on some entity position and see which one actually draws. And then you just store that one. You would just call this and then say it's stored at uh, index three. Just do get all cameras and then just get value of index three of that array so this is a system dot array and there you go you then you'll have the camera you need we can also get the position of the camera how because it in inherits component now component is a is the is a really awesome class because it gets everything we need so we're going to take a look at it it and it, it it hold it inherits object which we're going to take a look at lastly and it holds things like transform which is date it's like position and rotation data 
and game object important stuff we want to look at but we're going to take a look at transform okay transform class it's a class so what do we do it's a pointer right don't forget that we can there's a lot of stuff you gear you see a lot of position get position injected rotation whatever blah 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 local position set position set rotation you know all this good stuff translations uh, we even have built-in aimbot if you wanted to do a built-in aimbot if you're lucky enough that your game actually relies on the transform to send server angles then you're in luck here you go but most games don't do that so i hope most games wouldn't do that because then they're just allowing aimbot to be super easily accessible so you would just give either the transformer a target or you would just do the world position now and it will set your transform exactly on that position but we can look at right here we have local position rotation we have um, our forward we get forward we have our sorry we have our position of the player or whatever entity we're trying to access we can get the parent transform and it's just a lot of stuff that we can access we can even access the Euler angles our current Euler angles so we can pass that into a quaternion and so enough about this class let's move on to the quaternion class remember this is a structure so what it's not a pointer and if it's returning a non if a non static method is returning a quaternion or a structure what do we do well this isn't a really good example um because it's static you can actually just call it but what do we do we have to unbox it so this this we're taking a look at this structure because it actually has stuff like you know set Euler angles which is good set Euler rotation set from to rotation set look rotation but most classes structures are not going to rely on sending this data to the server we can actually calculate it ourselves by calling look rotation and then the forward position is going to be the entity's position that you want to you know us uh, to look at so you can calculate angles here and then you just would calculate X, Y, and Z, whatever, and W, however you want to access the data. Next up, we're going to go back to transform. Sorry. Uh, we're going to have to go back to transform. We're going to take a look at the component class. Now, the component class is by far, sorry, the object class is by far uh, the basic the base class uh, every unity engine class is going to inherit um, but this is not a system object okay as you see here this is a system object which is actually um, a class that you can also access <laughs> it's also a class so you can get the type this is system object by the way not unity engine object this is system object don't forget I know it's same color same name it's confusing I get it but understand the difference between them this is system object so all the stuff you can access but um let's take a look at unity engine object okay unity engine object system object two different classes we can see there's a lot of stuff we can do here and they're all most of them static methods but we can get some you know non-static methods and fields such as the uh, mcache pointer it stores the pointer that directly accesses the object see it's an int pointer and this structure returns um, the pointer value which it's a void pointer which you can just cast to whatever whatever unsigned type you used as long as it matches the architecture size so that's fine uh, the reason why we're looking at this is because it has this awesome but resource intensive method called find object of type or I'm uh, sorry find objects of type <laughs> with the object array okay now this method here this is going to be your final stand method you're going to use all right if you cannot find a class you're trying so hard to find a class you know that class stores data you want to access but you can't find a way to access it there's no static methods for accessing it there's no other class that accesses it or there is a class access it but you can't access that class anyway so this is your last resort this is your final stand this is your last bullet you go ahead and you pass in a type it's a class.system.type um, 
It says every almost everything in everything inherits system dot object. You can easily get the type of, and my mono helper will figure it out for you. It'll do everything for you. You just have to memorize how to use it. Okay. So this is gonna very resource intensive. It's gonna loop through every single object in the game, not system object. Okay. Anything that inherits a Unity engine object, anything that inherits this class, anything. It's going to loop through all of that, okay? So that's why it's an issue. They're very resource intensive. So like material, it inherits uh, Unity engine object. If we wanted to, we just pass in, we want to get all the materials loaded in the game. We pass in the material dot type, material class type, and it will generate us a array. And this is a system array, so don't forget about that. All right. So that's going to be it for this tutorial, and this is just part one. I'm going to upload part two later on, but this is for you to just get started with. All right, you need to understand the importance of all of this stuff, and make sure you memorize how to get to these those classes. Remember, Unity dot Unity Engine dot Core module was the assembly name. This is the namespace names, and this is the class names, structure names, and then over here, if it has fields. Uh, I guess not. Well, if they had fields, then you just put in the field name. But, All right, that's going to be it.